This is Dan. He lives in the US, where he uses US dollars every day. Dan wants to travel to France and then to Japan. In France, they use euros, where one dollar is 0.94 euro. And when he travels to Japan, the one dollar is equal to 150 yen. Have you ever wondered why one dollar is not equal to one euro or one yen? The value of these currencies changes in each country and the majority of the countries use their own currency. Why can't the value of all these currencies be the same? But before we answer this question, you need to know the history of currencies. Before the invention of currencies, people traded using barter methods where items were exchanged instead of currencies. But it had many drawbacks, so we started using gold and silver as currencies. The gold and silver were universally valued and were easier to trade. But as more and more countries started to form, the governments of those countries started issuing new currency that was backed by gold. The value of the currency was tied to the amount of gold a country had, and it also added stability to the currency. It was known as the gold standard. But after World War II, because of industrialization, the economies and trade started to grow, and more currencies were exchanged. So it was getting difficult to keep more and more gold. So countries started to move away from the gold standard and introduced a new system called fiat money. Fiat money is not backed by anything like gold, and its value depends on what people believe. If people believe that the fiat money's value is more, then they will try to get it. If they do not think it has much value, then they will not try to get it. So basically, the value of fiat money depends on the supply and demand. Now, all the currencies in the world are fiat currencies. They all have their value tied to their supply and demand. The more demand a currency has, the more its value. This supply and demand is also affected by many factors such as interest rate, inflation, and the economy of that country. Let's see how interest rates affect the value of a currency. The interest rates are the cost of borrowing money in that country. You have seen this news about the Fed interest rates, as it is always crucial whether the Fed increases or decreases the interest rates. For example, if the interest rate in the US is 10%, then if you borrow $10,000, then you have to pay back $11,000 with interest. When the country has higher interest rates, that means it is offering a better return on its investment. Because of these better returns, foreign investors get interested in investing in that country. So to invest in that country, they have to buy the currency of that country, ultimately creating more demand for the currency. So if the US government is offering its government bonds at the rate of 10% interest for 10 years, then when investors give the US government $10,000, they receive $1,000 per year for 10 years. So if the US is offering more interest, then people will demand US dollars, increasing the value of the dollar. However, if the interest rates fall, investors look elsewhere. For example, if France is offering more interest, then people will sell their US dollars and demand more euros. This will decrease the value of the dollar and increase the value of the euro. But a country cannot keep increasing its interest rates because with more interest rates, fewer people and businesses in that country borrow money. That means they spend less, and ultimately, that means a slowdown in the economy. That's why these interest rates are always balanced by the Fed. The second factor that affects the currency is inflation. When a country has high inflation, the value of its currency decreases because nobody wants to buy and hold a currency that has low value. You might have seen Donald Trump's video about Tic Tacs. But that's what happened. This is inflation. This is Tic Tac. This is Tic Tac. This is inflation. This is what's happened. I just happened to have somebody gave me this one today. I said, I think we'll put it up as an example of inflation. What he is explaining is the inflation, or you can say shrinkflation as well. For example, if you could buy two candies for $5 in 2020, now with $5, you can only get one candy. That is inflation. With the same amount of money, you get fewer goods. That means the value of your money decreased. There are many reasons for inflation, such as corruption, 
economic problems, and many countries just printing a lot of money. Venezuela's government's bad policies and unstable government made the inflation sky high in Venezuela. The $1 was equal to 6 million Venezuelan bolivars. After that, Venezuela changed their currency in 2018. The third factor is the import and export. When a country like China exports its product to other parts of the world, then, in order to buy that product, you need Chinese yuan. The more products China exports, the more yuan will be needed by the buyers of the Chinese goods. This creates significant demand for yuan in the market, which makes it stronger against other currencies. To make more production, China made it easy for foreign investors to start factories there. So, if foreign investors are opening factories in China, then they will need local labor and more yuan to run the factories in China, which ultimately makes yuan stronger. One of the most traded and common commodities in the world is crude oil. Every country needs crude oil. In the 1970s, the US made a pact with oil-selling countries like Saudi Arabia that they would sell oil in US dollars only. So, even if Saudi Arabia is selling oil to India, Japan, or Australia, all these countries have to pay Saudi Arabia in US dollars only. That's why the US dollar is also known as the petrodollar. Because it is a petrodollar, all the countries in the world hold US dollars as a foreign reserve currency. This creates huge demand for US dollars, making it even stronger. Pegging the currency Pegging a currency is like hitting the subscribe button. It's a way to stay stable and connected to something reliable, just like you can rely on us for great content. Speaking of which, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Some countries have smaller economies, so what they do is peg their currency to the US dollar. For example, the Bahamas has pegged their currency with USD. The Bahamian economy thrives on tourism and 60% of the tourists are coming from the United States. So, tourists face no currency conversion issues when spending. As the Bahamas is a small economy with limited ability to influence global markets, pegging to the USD provides them credibility for their monetary policy. And even if some global fluctuations happen, as the US dollar is a stable currency, it can easily sustain it. Overall, Pegging a currency to a stronger currency gives more stability to these smaller countries. But a smaller country's economy completely depends on another country. If you go to Europe, 20 out of 27 EU member countries use the euro as their official currency. The remaining 7 European countries use their own currency. Using euros makes it possible for people in Europe to travel conveniently without much hassle. For example, if you go to Prague in the Czech Republic, the official currency of the Czech Republic is the Czech Karuna, but at most places, you can use the Euro as well. Countries like Czech Republic, Poland, and others do not want to use the Euro as their main currency even though they are in the European Union. That is because when a country adopts the Euro, it essentially gives up control over its monetary policy. The European Central Bank becomes the central authority managing the money supply, interest rates, and inflation for all countries in the Eurozone. This means that individual countries cannot independently adjust interest rates or devalue their currency to respond to their specific economic conditions. They must follow the policies set by the ECB, which may not always align with the needs of their local economy. To wrap up, Currency values are shaped by basic economics of supply and demand. Higher demanded currencies have higher value, and most importantly, they are stable currencies, which gives a sense of security. Some countries peg their currencies to the US dollar for stability, while others use the euro for easier travel and trade. That's why different currencies have different values.